All right, the reason for this introduction to international business is to talk about all business being international business. In reality, you shouldn't have a separate international business course because all business has things to do with international business. And this little opening example, which I want you to read about, has to do with Harvey's, which is a hamburger chain found in 1959, same year as your prof. And talks about the fact that Harvey's also owns Swiss Chalet, Second Cup, Kelsey's, Montana's, Milestones, Outback Steakhouses, that's all part of the corporate group. So when you read this little story, you'll see how international business affects a hamburger chain like Harvey's. All right, let's scroll down some. Okay, now another point that I want you to read here is about what is international business in Canada. Most of international business in Canada is forest products, grains and oil seeds, marine products, mining and minerals. And when you're looking at these points here, obviously the most important relevance to you is that none of these things are in evidence in the greater Toronto area. You don't see large forests with huge trucks carrying logs back and forth on highways that you take to school. You don't see 200 car trains going across the track on their way out to Vancouver. You don't see slag heaps, which is evidence of mining. You don't see boats pulling up in a harbor. These are all the big four or five categories of international business, which you as students here in the GTA don't necessarily see, but it's something you need to understand about. And it's all related to the the geographic environment within which Canada developed. Let's scroll down. This talks about the international imports of Canada, the consumer products and processed foods. Now, I'll just scroll down a little bit further. One of the reasons for looking at this chart is for you to know what are the companies, because it's very useful for students in international business to know who are the players. And the reason why I made these boxes in green right here is so that you could understand that the banking industry in Canada is very big in terms of the total circumstance of Canadian companies. America's largest companies are companies like Microsoft and General Motors and Walmart, companies that make things and sell things. Whereas in Canada, one thing that's very interesting is that the banks are the biggest companies in terms of sales and profits, almost like economic pimps on our system, so to speak. Okay, scroll down further. Okay, stop here. Now, Although the banks and the oil companies appear to be the big players in the Canadian economy, both kinds of companies operate in, a, in an environment which makes money off of other companies. So let's look at the circumstances by which these companies exist. In Canada, there are certain physical and environmental forces that have created the reason why these companies exist. First of all, forest products, grain exports, marine and fish, and mining are the consequence of our gifts of natural resources. So it's important to understand the effects of the environment on international business because business doesn't happen in a, in a vacuum. You need to understand business in a context. Scroll down a bit. So these are the reasons. These are the physical forces. First of all, the east-west spread of Canada. How many time zones are there in Canada? Three? Four? That's a big chunk of real estate on the face of the planet. Also, topographical and climactic challenges. Topographical means mountains going up and down and flat land. And climactic challenge just means cold weather, warm weather, the number of degree days of, of sunlight. Next weekend, we'll have daylight savings time. Do you know what time sunsets today? Sunset today is around six minutes after six o'clock. Next weekend, sunset will be five minutes after five o'clock. So it's darker earlier. That limits the things that you can do outside without lights. Mountains act as barriers to transportation. Cost of food affects health and lifestyle. Canadians don't have banana milkshakes in the wintertime as often as Americans do in the far southern states. And also the gifts of our natural resources, logging, lumber, paper, rich soil for agriculture, and also coastline. The motto of Canada is Maria Asqua ad Maria, Asqua ad Maria, which means from sea to sea to sea. Okay, further down. There's also a unit in this section on globalization. The greatest challenge of political leaders today is to cause the public to think that liberalizing trade will be more benefits in, than costs. The concept of globalization is letting companies all around the world buy and sell their products without any restrictions even though individual small and medium-sized companies may find it difficult. So if you scroll down a little bit further here, you'll see some of the comments about what <coughs> globalization is. The fact that more people are connected around the globe than before, 
because of the technological environment, allowing the speed of information to communicate between people, and also the transportation developments allowing air travel and rail travel. So globalization, there's many different definitions, and you can click on some of these links and look about it, but basically it describes the horizontal and vertical integration of manufacturing and trade on an international level. And the question that we talk about in terms of globalization is whether it's possible to compete with the cheapest producers. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? So when you read this section, look for those points. All right, let's go down further. Here's a little example of a Canadian company, Woods Canada, which was negatively affected by globalization. Woods was selling sleeping bags to Canadian Tire. Canadian Tire then ended up sourcing those sleeping bags directly from China, and Woods went out of business. Scroll further. Here's a little story about Schrade, which makes little pocket knives like that. They were selling them to Walmart. Walmart squeezed them and said, can you sell them for less? Schrade says, no, we can't. Walmart threatened that they would buy them directly from China. Schrade couldn't do that, so they ended up having to close their company and go bankrupt. Other examples now. The other thing in globalization and international business, we'll talk about foreign exchange topics. Recently, we had a very extreme example in Canada where the Canadian dollar was in the area of 96 94, 92 cents US, and then just in a very short period of two weeks it dropped into the 80s, and now today it's trading at 74 cents, which is both a good thing and a bad thing. It's good if you're a Canadian company exporting, because it means it's cheaper for other countries to buy your stuff. It's a bad thing if you want to go across to the US side and buy things on Thanksgiving and Christmas, because it makes it more expensive to buy US products. Scroll further down. Here's a little line chart which talks about the U.S. dollars per Canadian dollar. Since 2002-2003, the Canadian dollar has gone very, very high. Throughout the 1980s and the 1990s, the Canadian dollar was in the range of 80 cents, in that range. And then all of a sudden, in 2007-2008, it went way up above a dollar, which was great if you want to buy stuff from the U.S., but very bad if you want to export to the U.S. And about 70-75% of Canadian products are exported to the U.S. So when our dollar is high, that's a bad thing. Scroll down further. These are some economic indicators you can read about the dollar. Okay, just scroll further. And these are talking about the pros and cons. You can scroll further. And now this is some comments about factors affecting the exchange rate. Uh, and I want you to read that section so you'll know what are some of the things that happen to cause the dollar to go higher or lower. Scroll further. Okay, here's some points about why export, why companies should grow and why they can't stay the same. Many businesses are forced into international business due to the competitive environment, because if they don't get involved in international business, there are other companies that they compete with will, and they'll lose their customers. Okay, let's go further. So this talks about some of the collaborative arrangements, like strategic alliances, consortiums, and franchising. So if you read this section, just scroll further, it talks about some of the reasons why companies get involved in these different types of strategies. Scroll further. Right here. This talks about the ones that involve collaborative relationships, like licensing, joint ventures, and alliances. Scroll further. Contract manufacturing, and so on. And consortiums. The other part of international business is foreign direct investment. This means when a company from another country buys something, like real estate or a company or property, and then owns that and controls it. So we'll talk about Canadian companies involved in foreign direct investment and also Canada receiving foreign direct investment. For example, when you drive up the DVP, you see that big sign that says the new headquarters of Honda Canada, that's an example of foreign direct investment. Okay, you can turn it off now.